Uh, first, a correction. Uh, I wasn't leader of those projects. I'm very proud that two women were leader, Cristiana Parisi of uh, Reflow and Francesca Bria of Decode. I was very honored to work with these principal investigators. I came for repair, and I think it's an urgent issue. I think we lost the right to repair long ago, and this is because we live in a consumerist society where basically obsolescence makes profit for the companies that sell us things and expire. And I'm not the only one thinking that way, because the European Parliament approved a law in 2023 for the right to repair, and the law entered in action in the 2nd of February of this year. And we should be aware of this, and we should enforce and ask for its enforcement. Why? Because if we don't have the right to repair, we cannot repurpose, we cannot refurbish, we cannot reuse things. And often we have strings attached to the things we buy, which is a basic violation of uh, you know, the market laws. So at Dyn.org, we are a hacker community. We are hackers. We like to put our, uh, our hands into things. We like to open the boxes. And we represent people like the friendly TV repair shop that disappeared from your streets. We represent people like the young gamers that cannot open up their game console, which is a huge power, or their mobile phone, which is as, which is as power as, uh, powerful as a computer 10 years ago, and change it, install their own things, study it, distribute modifications. So these rights are taken away from us every day, every year has been taken away and made profit for. And these things should concern you also as policymakers, because when you are proposed a new gizmo for your smart city to install the new cameras or lights or sensors, you should always ask, how long are you going to produce updates and chips for those things? In 20 years from now, will you be able to upgrade or maintain or substitute the parts of your infrastructure just like you are able now to change the lamp of a light on the street? Because if you are not, you will become enslaved by the companies that are providing you with infrastructure. And they will just propose you new, new products because what you're using, basically, they are like short-lived productions in China that don't give you any warranty about 20 years lifetime, which should be a basic, and a basic question, I believe, for a city infrastructure. So these are the conditions in which we can enable a circular economy today in Europe. And we are very far from it. There are a lot of resources put by the European Commission, for which I'm grateful, into this topic. The urgency is raising, and we can all do something into our private and into our professional life to enforce it. So here I am, just uh, uh, as a hacker, standing in between uh, uh, two symbols you see over the slides. One is uh, a devil hot, and one is a penguin cold. Just in the middle of the uh, climate crisis, I think, they are nice symbols. One is the symbol of the BSD system. One is the symbol of the Linux system. There are alternative operating systems you can use. They can run on old computers. You can use to recycle old uh, machines. And unlikely Microsoft Windows 11, they will never ask you to buy a new eighth generation computer to upgrade your system. And here is my open question. How much carbon footprint is derived by a choice of a software manufacturer to require new computers to upgrade? How much footprint is uh, raised by the dismission of a 3G? And so here you have to buy a new phone to actually connect the systems. Uh, here we are standing with an ancient question posed by an uh, economist that is very dear to me, Schumacher. And uh, actually it's not a question, it's, a, it's an assertion. When he said that uh, Every time we recycle, a liability is turned into an asset. And this is what we have to do now in Europe. We have to turn the enormous liabilities we have to the climate that we are dealing with, and uh, they shouldn't scare us. We should turn them into assets as fast as possible. Thank you.